Hello, my name is Mark Allen, Product Manager from Modivac, and I'm here to talk about how to properly diagnose a fuel delivery system. Because fuel pressure is so critical to modern fuel injection systems, current diagnostic techniques tend to focus only on the capability of the fuel delivery system to provide pressure. So while fuel volume is just as critical to engine performance, it is largely overlooked or assumed to be adequate. In many cases, checking fuel volume is considered only as a last resort. The fact is, Peak engine performance and efficiency depend on adequate fuel pressure and volume from idle to peak horsepower. Diagnosing a fuel delivery system by considering pressure or volume alone can be misleading and unreliable at best, especially if testing is not performed at peak engine output when its volume requirement is greatest. The MightyVac FST Pro fuel system tester is the only on-car diagnostic tool that allows a technician to simultaneously observe values for both pressure and volume while simulating peak engine requirements. This video demonstrates the proper application of the MightyVac FST Pro to achieve the most accurate and reliable diagnosis of a vehicle's fuel delivery system. For the purpose of fuel delivery diagnostics, it's critical to determine if the fuel delivery system is return or returnless, as this will greatly impact the test procedure and corresponding results. On return fuel systems, all of the fuel coming out of the fuel pump goes into the engine. The engine draws what it needs from the continuous supply, and the rest is returned to the fuel tank. Return fuel systems will have two fuel lines going to the fuel rail, one for fuel going in and one for fuel going out. On a returnless fuel system, the only fuel pump to the engine is what it actually uses. Excess fuel coming from the pump is bypassed either in or just outside the tank. Returnless fuel systems will have only one fuel line going into the fuel rail. Some manufacturers, including Ford, use a pressure sensor in the fuel rail to vary the speed of the fuel pump. These systems should be tested using the same method as a standard returnless system. Multiple speed fuel pumps are an additional variable that must be taken into consideration prior to testing. Some vehicles vary the fuel pump speed depending on engine requirements. In the case of a multiple speed fuel pump, follow the vehicle manufacturer's procedure to switch the fuel pump to its highest speed prior to testing. Once you've determined the type of fuel delivery system, follow the FST user's manual to properly install the fuel system tester. Be sure to note all safety precautions and always wear safety glasses. The key to determining whether a fuel delivery system is failing is to test it at peak engine output because that is when it's under its greatest demand. To do this, you will need to know the vehicle manufacturer's specification for fuel pressure and the approximate volume of fuel the engine requires at peak output. The idle fuel pressure specification can be found in most service or repair manuals. The maximum fuel volume requirement can be determined using the maximum engine fuel volume requirements chart in the back of the FST user's manual or it can be calculated using the maximum fuel flow formula found on the AASA Fuel Pump Manufacturers Council website at fuelpumpinfo.org. With the MightyVac fuel system tester connected and the connections properly tested, start the engine and allow it to idle. First, observe the fuel for contamination and air bubbles as it flows through the clear flow tube in the flow meter. If the fuel is discolored or appears contaminated, have it chemically checked and or drain and thoroughly clean or replace the fuel tank before continuing. Expect to see air bubbles when you first start the vehicle as air is purged from the tester and fuel line, but it is not normal to see them once the system is clear. The continued presence of air bubbles in the fuel stream is an indication of a severe restriction, typically at the fuel pump inlet strainer. Keeping this in mind, watch for further evidence of blockage as you continue testing. On return fuel systems, at idle, the pressure gauge will indicate the fuel pressure in the system. Make note of this value. Next, note the volume of fuel by reading across the top of the float on the FST flow meter and comparing it to the adjacent scale. Because the fuel pump operates at a constant output and all of the fuel must pass through the fuel rail, diagnosing the performance of a return type fuel system is very straightforward if you know the pressure and volume at the rail. In fact, on a return system, the test values for pressure and volume at idle represent the peak output of the fuel delivery system. 
Start by comparing the test value for idle pressure to the manufacturer's pressure specification. Is it normal, low, or high? Next, compare the test value for idle volume to the engine's maximum volume requirement you looked up earlier. If idle pressure is normal and idle volume meets or exceeds the engine's maximum requirement, the fuel delivery system is capable of performing to meet the engine's requirements from idle to peak output. However, if the pressure is out of specification and or the volume is below the maximum requirement of the engine, this would indicate a malfunction in the fuel delivery system. While a performance test will determine if there is a malfunction, additional testing should be performed to pinpoint the cause of the malfunction and support the final diagnosis. The first test is to determine the maximum pressure the pump can produce when all flow is restricted. This is called a deadhead test. Performing a deadhead test will completely restrict the fuel flow, so be prepared to execute it quickly to prevent damage to the fuel pump. Locate the knob for the flow control valve on the side of the FST and rotate it 90 degrees clockwise from the open position to the closed position. Quickly note the value for peak pressure indicated on the pressure gauge and then return the valve to the open position. This completes the deadhead test. The second test is to determine the peak volume of the pump when there is no restriction to flow. This is called the bypass test because the volume is measured when the fuel flow is bypassing the pressure regulator. To perform a bypass test, turn the flow control knob from the open position 180 degrees clockwise to the bypass position. You will notice the fuel flowing from the bypass port located on the side of the tester above the flow control knob. While in the bypass mode, note the peak flow by reading across the top of the float on the FST flow meter. After you've recorded this volume, return the knob to the open position. If the vehicle stalls during this test, simply return the knob to the open position and restart. Performing a deadhead test and bypass test, in addition to the original performance test, will yield values for idle pressure, idle volume, peak pressure, and peak flow for the vehicle. List these values out, as they will all be taken into consideration when making a final diagnosis. When performing the deadhead test, it is normal for the pressure to peak at least 50% higher than the manufacturer's pressure specification. If it can't achieve this output, then consider the value for peak pressure to be low. When performing the bypass test for peak flow, it is normal for the volume to reach over 0.7 gallons per minute. If it doesn't, consider the value for peak flow to be low. Using these criteria, indicate on your list of test values whether each is low, normal, or high. A restriction to the fuel supply reduces the flow of fuel to the engine. As long as a restriction is small enough, the fuel pressure regulator can compensate for it and maintain the required pressure. However, any compensation by the regulator will cause a decrease in volume. As the restriction increases, the volume will decrease until the engine is starved for fuel. On return fuel systems, restrictions are much more evident by observing fuel volume than pressure. When values for idle and peak pressure are normal, but idle and peak volume are low, this is a good indication of blockage in the fuel supply line, typically caused by a clogged fuel filter or inlet strainer or pinch supply line. If the test values indicate a restriction, replace the fuel filter, inspect the fuel supply lines, and retest. If the test results are the same, you'll need to inspect the fuel pump to determine if it has a clogged inlet strainer or some other source of blockage. Once you've located the blockage, repair it and retest. A fuel pressure regulator creates pressure by restricting flow. Depending on how the regulator fails, it may create too much pressure by over-restricting the flow or too little pressure by under-restricting the flow. If the test value for idle pressure is high and idle volume is low or vice versa, this is a good indication of a malfunctioning pressure regulator. In addition, if the values for peak pressure and volume are both good, it would support this diagnosis because these values are generated while fuel was bypassing the regulator. In this case, replace the fuel pressure regulator and retest. <laughs>
If all four test values are low, this would indicate a performance issue with the fuel pump. Check the fuel pump electrical circuit and power supply. Only if they are good should you replace the fuel pump and retest. On a returnless fuel system, at idle, the pressure gauge will indicate the fuel pressure in the system. Make note of this value. Observe the float inside the clear flow tube. It should be at the bottom or very near it. This is normal because the only fuel flowing through the system is what the engine needs to idle. Locate the flow control knob on the side of the FST and rotate it clockwise past the closed position and toward the bypass position. Fuel will begin to flow from the bypass port on the side of the flow meter and the float will rise to indicate the volume. Continue to rotate the knob until the volume indicated by reading across the top of the float is equal to the maximum engine volume requirement you looked up earlier. Once you've dialed in this volume, make note of the pressure reading on the gauge, then return the knob to the open position. If the vehicle stalls during this test, simply return the knob to the open position and restart. The test you just performed simulates a load on the fuel delivery system as if the engine were performing at peak horsepower. It's critical to an accurate performance diagnosis because many malfunctions won't become evident unless the engine is under load. When performing this test, you are bypassing the volume of fuel equivalent to the engine's peak demand. At that point, the pressure noted on the gauge is the peak demand pressure. It represents the pressure the fuel delivery system is capable of producing when the engine is using its greatest volume. Having now collected values for idle pressure and peak demand pressure, compare them to the manufacturer's pressure specification. If the fuel delivery system is functioning properly, idle pressure should meet the specification and peak demand pressure should be within 10%. If this is true, then the fuel delivery system is capable of performing to meet the engine's requirements at peak output. However, if idle pressure is out of specification and or the peak demand pressure is greater than 10% below spec, then the fuel delivery system is malfunctioning. While a performance test will determine if there is a malfunction, additional testing should be performed to pinpoint the cause of the malfunction and support the final diagnosis. While idle and peak demand pressure are a good indication of the capability of the fuel delivery system, a bypass test to determine the peak volume output of the fuel pump is critical to pinpointing a malfunction in a returnless fuel system. During the bypass test, fuel is allowed to flow unrestricted from the tester in order to determine the peak volume capability of the fuel delivery system. To perform a bypass test, turn the flow control knob from the open position 180 degrees clockwise to the bypass position. While in the bypass mode, note the peak flow by reading across the top of the float on the FST flow meter. After you've recorded this volume, return the knob to the open position. If the vehicle stalls during this test, simply return the knob to the open position and restart. Performing a bypass test in addition to the original performance test will yield values for idle pressure, peak demand pressure, and peak flow for the vehicle. All of these values must be taken into consideration when making a final diagnosis. Start by listing the test values you obtained for idle pressure, peak demand pressure, and peak flow. Compare the idle pressure to the manufacturer's specification. It will be either low, normal, or high. Peak demand pressure will typically be slightly lower than the idle pressure. Consider it normal if it's within 10% below the manufacturer's spec. If it's greater than 10% below the spec, consider it low. If it's higher than the specification, consider it high. When performing a bypass test for peak flow, it is normal for the volume to reach over 0.7 gallons per minute. If the value for peak volume is less than 0.7 gallons per minute, consider it low. Using these criteria, indicate on your list of test values whether each is low, normal, or high. Now review your list of test values. If all the values are normal, the fuel delivery system is operating normally. A restriction to the fuel supply reduces the flow of fuel to the engine. The method employed for regulating the pressure, whether it be a pressure regulator or electronic control of the fuel pump speed, can typically compensate for small restrictions. However, 
As the restriction increases, fuel volume will decrease until the engine is starved for fuel. If idle pressure is normal, yet peak demand pressure and peak flow are low, this is a typical indication of blockage in the fuel supply, possibly caused by a clogged fuel filter or inlet strainer or pin supply line. If the test values indicate a restriction, replace the fuel filter, inspect the fuel supply lines, and retest. If the test results are the same, you'll need to inspect the fuel pump to determine if it has a clogged inlet strainer or some other source of blockage. Once you've located the blockage, repair it and retest. A mechanical fuel pressure regulator creates pressure by restricting flow, while a system that regulates fuel pressure electronically does so by varying fuel pump speed. In either case, depending on how the regulating system fails, it will create too much or too little pressure. This will be evident by the test values for idle and peak demand pressures both being low or both being high, while the peak flow remains normal. If the fuel system is electronically regulated by the PCM, follow the vehicle manufacturer's procedure to diagnose this system. If the fuel system utilizes a mechanical diaphragm pressure regulator, replace it if possible and retest. In many cases, the fuel pressure regulator is not replaceable, requiring the replacement of the entire fuel pump module. Before going through this expense, always check the electrical circuit and power supply to the fuel pump. Only if these are found to be good should you replace the module. If an electrical problem exists, repair it and retest. If all three test values are low, this would indicate a performance issue with the fuel pump. Test the electrical circuit and power supply of the pump. Only if they are determined to be good should the fuel pump be replaced. In the majority of cases, a quick test combining the capability of the MightyVac FST with the proper fuel system diagnostic techniques can determine the capability of the fuel delivery system. However, exceptions such as an intermittent malfunction caused by a sticky fuel pressure regulator or loose ground can cause the system to perform flawlessly one moment but fail the next. In addition, multiple malfunctions will significantly increase the complexity of pinpointing a failure. Employing the proper tools such as a pressure and volume tester with bypass capabilities like the MightyVac FST will always provide the best starting point. In cases where the diagnostic test results are borderline or inconclusive, Consider connecting the FST in alternate locations, possibly upstream of the filter or on the return side of the pressure regulator. By applying common sense and a basic understanding of fuel delivery systems to the test results, you should come up with the most likely conclusion. And there you have it. With the assistance of the MightyVac FST and this video, you should now be able to accurately diagnose a fuel delivery system. Thank you for your time. See you around the garage.